So the first step in many projects is, as we've indicated, assembling a miniature gazetteer for the project. Ideally, this is a collection of structured data about the place names and places that are relevant to whatever the research question is. For our example today, working with the Vicarella Cups, uh, what we will do is we will try to make structured data for each of the places that are mentioned on the cups and we can use that then for visualization or analysis. Fortunately, the text of the Vicarello Cups has already been published, so uh, we're in a position to copy that text for our own research purposes and then work it into structured data. The structured data that we're going to try to produce is in the comma separated values format, so a simple table, something you could open in a spreadsheet program or in a wide variety of other software. We're going to work through the process of collecting the text, making it into a minimally sufficient CSV file, and then adding some information to the CSV file that will set us up for the next step, which is trying to align it or reconcile it with a digital gazetteer that can provide us with coordinates so we can do some visualization. The Eagle Inscriptions project uh, provides access to and search of a number of different online sources of epigraphic material, and that's what we're going to use to find a text of the Vicarello Cups. We'll go to their search page, and the easiest way to do this is some to search for some distinctive text that's in the inscription. I happen to know that several of them include the word itinerary in Latin, itinerarium. So we'll search for that. And we get five results. So we're going to scroll down and see uh, this doesn't seem to be related. Inscription from Forum Clodii, da 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 da, Abgades usque Romam itinerarium. Okay, so from Gades. Uh, to Rome, an itinerary. This is one of them, the one I'd like to use for our purposes here because it requires the least amount of editorial intervention is this one. So we're going to click on that result, which takes us to the Eagle display. And what we really want to do is get to the original source. So we're going to go to the website of the epigraphic database Roma, which provides that particular text. And in fact, here we have the text. It's got a unique identifying number, but what we're interested in is the text itself. So we will just select that text from beginning to end, and we will copy it. We're now going to switch over to a text editor. Any good text editor should be able to support doing this. I'm using Sublime Text on a Macintosh, but uh, there are lots of other choices, both open source and paid, and we'll paste in the text. Now, what we have here is some plain text that's got some uh, aspects to it that make it a little difficult to use as uh, ordered data, structured data, uh, on its own. The uh, interstitial periodic introduction of line numbers is useful, problematic, and then also the column indications. But we can fix all that with a little judicious use of regular expressions. Regular expressions uh, uh, is a language for manipulating, matching, and manipulating text. This particular text editor supports the execution of regular expressions on textual content, and that's what we're going to use. And our goal is to produce a comma-separated values file. We want two columns. The first column will contain line numbers, one for each line, and then the second column will contain the text as we have it. And then we can uh, uh, get rid of these column entries later. So I'm going to invoke the appropriate section of this. And the first thing I want to do, I think, is to match any line at the very beginning that has uh, one or more digits beginning that line. So that's going to capture our line numbers. And these can have some space after them. And then I'm going to produce a new line that repeats the number we've matched 
introduces a comma and a space, and then the rest of the line that wasn't matched will be copied in. So here I have now intervened in those lines, like this first one, and we've got a comma, which is the delimiter we use in comma-separated values. Now I need to introduce a comma at the beginning of each line that does not have a um, number in it so that we can avoid having these things be in the wrong columns. So here I've made an expression that matches any column that begins with something other than a number. And you can see it's picking up those initials, but not the initial of that line. And here, since we don't have a line number indicated, we're just going to put in a comma, which will cause a blank cell to appear in that column. And then we'll reintroduce the rest of the line. There we go. We are now ready to uh, treat this information as comma-separated values. So we're going to save it into a convenient directory. I think we should give it a name that will help us remember where we got it from. In this case, the EDR number. And we are going to give it the CSV extension. So we remember that it's comma-separated values. We can now dispense with our text editor. And what we're going to do now is open up this file in LibreOffice, which is an open source Office application and one that understands how to read CSV into a spreadsheet. That will give us a spreadsheet view that we can use to make more changes. Here we go. It's correctly identified the structure of the file. And we will bring it onto our screen. And here we have the data. First thing we want is a header. We're going to introduce the two columns, line and text. And then we're going to add a third column, place name. So this will be the place name drawn from the text on that line that we want to do something with in terms of our research. We're also going to take these column headers and turn them into another cell of data at the beginning of each line so that they're not in the way and they're not getting confused with text. And so when we work with our data later, we always know uh, for a given entry which column and which line the item came from. And now to make things easier to read, there we go. We're going to save this as a separate file so we don't write over what we're doing. And we're going to change the name appropriately. Um, LibreOffice likes to warn us that uh, there are kinds of things in spreadsheets that won't save into CSV, but we're okay with that. We know what we're doing, so we're going to proceed. <clears throat> First thing we need to do is get columns. There is a useful function in most spreadsheet tools called fill. That will repeat a number in the first cell into all other selected cells. This quickly lets us associate the column number and we note there's a keystroke for doing it more quickly. Now we have a column number for each line, so we can get rid of the lines that were functioning as headers. Now we want to get line numbers everywhere they belong. We'd like to fill with a series, and um, most major spreadsheets have an easy way for doing this. You start with your 
initial number and then you click and drag the little handle on the selected cell and that fills a um, series into the cells. Now, for each and every line, we have a good reference to what column number and what line number in the original text that line came from. The next thing we need to be able to do to work with this information as structured data in a spatial context is to extract the place names from the data. And this is where uh, we need to pay a little more attention to the text itself. We'll notice that the majority of lines consist of a place name, and then a number using Roman numerals. These place names are interpreted to be the major stops along the itinerary, and then the distances associated with them. You'll note that the units are not indicated. There are a couple of other lines. This first one, Itinerarium Agades Romam, and the last one, Summa Milia Passus, uh, which are not just place name number. Itinerarium Agades Romam is a heading or an introduction or a title. Um, so it's not properly one of these lines. And then the final line is a summation of the numbers of um, uh, Roman miles. And here we're actually given the units, Milia Passus, uh, that the whole itinerary requires. One of the characteristics of the names in the um, major lines of this inscription is that they tend to be in the accusative case. This is one of the challenges of dealing with an inflected language and place names in an inflected language, which is that uh, you will often have to normalize or make those names nominative. You can run into other problems trying to identify place names as well, but that's the first one we have to concern ourselves with here.